Howdy, howdy, this is Mr. Potter. In our video today, we're going to be talking about graphing linear functions, linear functions that we did a lot of discussion about in our previous video. So I want to talk about how to graph a linear function. So let's say I've got y equals 6x minus 8. So I've got a linear function here. And one of the easiest ways to do this is just to go ahead and substitute different values in for x and plot the points. So if I make a table of x's and f of x's for this function, say I've got 0, 1, 2, 3, some points up here, and I substitute these in for x to find out what my y coordinate is going to be. Here, 0 times 6 is 0, 0 take away 8 gives me negative 8. 1 times 6 is 6, take away 8 gives me a negative 2. Uh, 2 times 6 is 12, 12 minus 8 is 4. 3 times 6 is 18, and 18 minus 8 is 10. So I've got some points to deal with here. I've got the point 0 comma negative 8, I've got 1 comma negative 2, 2 comma 4, and 3 comma 10. So I need to do a graph that's going to allow me to have an x value that goes from 0 to 3 and a y value that allows me to go from a negative 8 to a positive 10. And I think counting by 2's is going to allow me to do that on the y-axis. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Counting by 1's on the x-axis allows me to do that. So there's 0, 1, 2, 3. And I'm just going to plot points. So I've got the point 0, negative 8. So over 0 and down 8 gives me this point here. 1, negative 2 gives me this point here. 2, comma 4 will give me uh, this point here. 3 comma 10 gives me this point here, and I notice that all of these points that I've plotted all lie on a straight line, assuming of course I can draw a straight line. All of these points lie on this line. Any other points that I were to put, even if I were to take 10, multiply it by 6 and subtract 8, this point 1052, which is going to be way off the top of my screen, is still going to be on this line. Similarly, if I were to take negative 8 and substitute that in and get uh, negative 42, if I were to go back 8, go down off the bottom of the screen, this point is still going to lie on this line. What's important to notice is that really for a line, only two points are necessary. We learned this from geometry, that two points uniquely determine the line. So I could have chosen any two of these points and just connected the dots between them. And if I connect the dots between these two points, all of the other points have to lie. They all have to coincide. And that's why my white line and my pink line here are pretty much the same line. Uh, there is no difference in it, of course, assuming that I could draw a straight line. So if I'm going to just plot points, all I really need is two of them, and there's a situation where one of them is a real easy point to deal with, and that's when I have a slope intercept. So let me go ahead and get an equation up here. I've got y equals, let's say, negative 4x plus 3. We know that our slope is negative 4, and we know that our y-intercept is 3. And this is important, the fact that our intercept is 3, because this is what happens when our input is equal to 0. Our input in this case is x, so I really have the point 0, 3. And this is our average rate of change per unit input, which means if this goes up by 1, then this has to change by negative 4. So 3 minus 4 is negative 1, and I've got my other point. I can either do this algebraically or tabularly or graphically. I could just go ahead and start by plotting this point, 0, 3. There's 0, 3. And then, of course, if I go over 1, I need to go down 1, 2, 3, 4. And, and I've, I've got, got my, my two points. points. So, so my line has to pass through horrible. My line has to pass through these two points. So there's my line. And all I need, of course, are two points. And one of these points is really nice. It came for free 
because of the slope intercept method, I know that's what happens when x in this case is equal to zero. Keep in mind that our slope is really the change in y over the change in x. So for us, our x initial value is zero, our y initial value is three, and I know that the slope is supposed to come out to negative four. So really, y2 minus 3 has to be equal to negative 4 times x2. And so I've got a real easy way to do this. Of course, if I say that y2 equals negative 4 times x2, and I move this 3 over, gosh, that certainly looks familiar, doesn't it? I mean, it looks really familiar. So this is the one method that we talked about last time, the slope-intercept method. The other method that we talked about for the equation of a line is the point-slope method. Remember, the point-slope method is going to be of the form y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Here, m is still our slope, the average rate of change, but now we have the point x1, y1. So we need to be able to identify this point from the expression and also identify the slope. So if I gave you this equation, if I gave you y plus 3 equals 2 times x plus 5, it's pretty clear that my slope is 2, but keep in mind I want it to be of this form, so my y-coordinate ends up actually being a negative 3. And because I want it in this form, my x-coordinate ends up being a negative 5. So I'm going to have the point negative 5, negative 3, and that definitely needs to be a point on my graph. So if I go left 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and down 3, this is going to be a point on my graph. But because I have this slope of 2, I need to go up 2 units over 1 unit, and this is the next point on my graph. I can continue this up and over staircase to get other points, but 2 is sufficient. And so my line will graph a lot like this. Of course, notice that because I have a point, I'm not necessarily starting on the y-axis, but every function will have a y-intercept. Every linear function, I should say. And of course, remember, I can find my linear function by just seeing what happens when I substitute 0 in for x. So in this case, y plus 3 equals 2 times 0 plus 5. I end up with y equals 7, so that means my y-intercept is going to occur at the point 0, 7. And of course, look what's happening with this line. If I continue this up 2 and over 1, up 2 and over 1, up 2 and over 1, this point right here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 points above the x-axis. Every one of these functions is going to have a y-intercept. Every one of these functions is going to have a slope. But oftentimes, it's going to be easier for us to graph with the point-slope method, especially if it's easy for us to figure out what is this x1 and y1 that we're given. So... The last thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about this notion about parallel and perpendicular lines. And when I talk about parallel lines, remember from a geometric standpoint, parallel lines are lines that don't intersect. And because these lie in the same plane, it's going to be important for us to realize that if they're not going to intersect, that means that they have to have the same rise and fall as each of these lines. And I probably should have drawn these a little bit better. Should be up to and over three. There we go. So these lines that I've graphed here are parallel. So one of the things I notice is that parallel lines have equal slope. And because if they didn't have equal slope, then that means this line's going to be rising a little bit too high and will eventually crash into this line. Or this line may not rise high enough, in which case the back end would end up crashing. So parallel lines have to have equal slope. 
And what's also important to notice is that in order for me to have a right angle when these two lines touch, in other words, for my lines to be perpendicular, the rise and the run, the increase in vertical and the increase in horizontal, really do have to be offset. So here, instead of going up one and over three, I really need something that goes down three and over one. Down three and over one. So this yellow line that I've got here that passes through these points really does give me that perpendicular line. And perpendicular lines are going to have negative reciprocal slopes. Now remember, that means that if my original slope was, in this case, one-third, we went up one and over three, up one and over three, my slope for my perpendicular line has to be the reciprocal of this and the additive inverse, so negative three over one. Notice this line goes down three and over one, down three and over one. So whenever I'm dealing with perpendicular lines, I need to remember that I need to find the reciprocal and I need to take the opposite of it, basically multiply it times negative one. So if I have this idea of having slopes that are uh, equal for parallel lines and slopes that are negative reciprocals for perpendicular lines, that means that I can find lines that are parallel to each other or perpendicular to each other given a point because the slope is going to be very easy to calculate. The slope has to be equal in the case of parallel and it has to be negative reciprocals in the idea of something that's perpendicular. Now, when I'm dealing with horizontal and vertical lines, some things are a little different. Uh, remember that I can get a horizontal line by just doing y equals a constant. y equals 1 is our parent function. And one of the things we notice is that our slope is 0. So when I'm looking at a horizontal line, I'm looking at a line where the slope is 0. There is no rising. There is no falling. It's not increasing or decreasing. And if I want something that's parallel to it, then I need to have the same slope. So this line y equals 3 is parallel to the line y equals 1 because these lines here have the same slope, basically a slope of 0. But if I want something that's vertical, I'm going to need something that's perpendicular to the horizontal line, but being perpendicular means that I'm going to run into a problem. Because what is the negative reciprocal of 0? Not allowed to divide by 0. So we say that the slope of a vertical line is undefined. And of course, because it's undefined, these are not going to be a function. Now, why is it not a function? Well, these lines don't pass the vertical line test, obviously because they are part of a vertical line. Notice that if in this case, if x is negative 1, I have the point negative 1. But here I have x is negative 1, y is 2. And the same x value gives me different y values. So this is not a function when I'm dealing with this. Horizontal lines are always going to be of the form y equals some value. Vertical lines are always going to be of the form x equals some value. Notice that all of the points on this vertical line here have the same x-coordinate. In this case, x equals negative 1. Vertical lines are not a function. So they're never going to be functions. Notice this vertical line doesn't have a y-intercept, and I talked about how all functions, all linear functions, are going to have one. Well, this isn't a function. That's why it doesn't have a y-intercept. So we say that this slope is undefined, and it's going to be of the form x equals h. So once we know these properties of slopes for vertical and horizontal lines, for parallel and perpendicular lines, we can go through an example of this. So I'm going to go through a real quick example here. So let's say that I want a line 
parallel parallel to y equals 2x plus 5 passing through the point 3, negative 6. Well, first off, because I'm talking about parallel, this slope is going to be really important to me, and this slope is actually going to be part of my answer. The other thing is that because I know a point, point slope is going to be much easier for me to work with than slope intercept form. So I have y minus my y coordinate, negative 6, equals 2 times x minus my x coordinate, 3. So I'm going to have y plus 6 equals 2x minus 6, or y equals 2x minus 12. This is going to be a line that's parallel to y equals 2x plus 5, and it's going to have to pass through this point, because if I take f of 3, that's going to give me 2 times 3 minus 12, or 6 minus 12 or negative 6. So I can tell by looking at the slope that it's going to be parallel. I can tell by substitution that it actually passes through the point that I'm interested in. So of course this leaves the question, what if I had asked the question if I wanted a line that was perpendicular to the same line y equals 2x plus 5 passing through 3 comma negative 6. Well now, because I want something that's perpendicular, my slope has to change. It has to be the negative reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 2 is 1, and the opposite of that is negative 1 half. So I've got the slope is going to have to be negative 1 half, but it still has to pass through the point. So I'm going to have y minus y1 equals negative 1 half x minus x1, and it still has to pass through the point 3, negative 6. So I've got y minus a negative 6 equals negative 1 half x minus 3. I'm going to distribute the negative 1 half. So that becomes 3 halves. This is really going to be y plus 6, so I'm going to write this as 12 halves, just because half seems to be a pretty good thing here. And I'm going to move this to the other side, so I'm going to have y equals negative 1 half x minus 9 halves. So I've been able to take a given line and a given point, and not only was I able to find a line that was parallel to it, but I was also able to find a line that was perpendicular to it. And I've written it both in the point-slope form and the slope-intercept form. I need to be able to recognize either of those if they're presented as answer choices. Once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.